All right. I think, I think we're good. Yes, we are live. Welcome back. We had some technical difficulties on Monday with our show. We had uh, Michael Lofito here. We had Michael Meidler, the CEO of Century 21 on Monday. Uh, this is our 29th episode of Luxury Lunch and Learn, and I'm excited to have today's guest on. Um, I have Taylor, so I want to make sure I pronounce it right, Samara, right? Yes. Taylor Samara, Realty One Group. Uh, they launched a luxury division during a pandemic, so we're going to be talking about that today. And um, But before we go into that, Taylor, tell everybody a little bit about uh, you and a little bit about Realty One Group, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. My name is Taylor Samara. I lead up the One Lux, our new luxury division for Realty One Group. Realty One Group has been around for 15 years. We're a 100% commission model company. We are growing faster than ever, one of the top franchisors in the real estate industry. And we're now in 43 states with over 13,000 agents. Man, 43 states, 13,000 agents. That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, last year we grew 80 new offices and we're onboarding about 20 more this month. Oh man, well, you got a great backdrop. You got an amazing backdrop with the One Lux Group and uh, obviously the name of our designation uh, is Luxury Listing Specialist or Lux. So hey, I, I, like the, I like the consistency there, that's awesome. Yeah, every time I see you wearing your Lux hat, I'm like, oh, I need to get myself one of those. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I, I had a pink one around here somewhere, uh, but absolutely, the, the Lux gear is good, and uh, today I'm going more with the golf golf uh, shirt. I'm golfing the first time in two years uh, after our our uh, interview here today. Nice. You're still in vacation mode from last week. I I, I still <laughs> am. Um, wife and kids get back tomorrow, so I'm getting a little golf in. Great. So tell us, um, you know, during COVID-19, obviously uh, before COVID-19 in our industry, a big term was uh, disruption, right? That was a term you heard a lot, but, but the term that you might hear more uh, during this unprecedented time, I guess, would be pivot, pivot, pivot. You know, what has Realty One Group done, uh, I guess, to pivot uh, during this shelter in place, depending on where you're at, or second wave is coming, or you're seeing some, you know, various uh, restrictions again that maybe were loosened over the last 30, 45 days. You know, what, what are, you know, what are some of, you know, not only just Realty One, but some of your top agents doing, I guess, to pivot during this time? Sure, so uh, we've always been a tech forward company and our offices, they're small, there's ability for our agents to come in and collaborate, meet, do office meetings, but we've always supported them in working virtually. So that has continued. What we did as an organization at the corporate level to pivot right at the beginning, we started the first week of April, we launched a site called Waking Up to Win and we hosted daily agent town halls at 9 a.m. every day 12 a.m. every day for our brokers and just educated. We talked about what's going on, all the different changes that were happening, the closures. We had brought on all of our partners to educate on how they might be pivoting during this time. Sure. And we saw a really good adoption of that. Our agents were thanking us and taking the time to organize themselves in their CRM, relearn or learn for the first time some of the products and tools that are offered to them so that they're ready to take charge of the market when their market's opened up. And now that some of the markets have opened up, we've seen, uh, we haven't seen a decrease in our sales or our transactions. Our agents are doing well, our offices are doing well. Um, I think what agents are doing who have pivoted and they're gonna continue to do it is uh, including the virtual tours in their listings as well as adopting virtual technology so like the zooms the webinars to be able to do consultations for those people who maybe don't want to have people in their home yet sure. be able to do virtual open houses to support that so that you have that flexibility and that option for your client but it also that just makes you a stronger agent you're taking hold of the digital sphere and you're going to get more views on your open houses so it's a win-win for everyone that's a, that's a that's a very good point um so you know with with what you're seeing, um, are you making the switch here to, to luxury? What you're seeing on the luxury side, um, are, are some of your agents seeing like more activity? I've talked to a lot of agents in different markets. I spoke to an agent today uh, 
that's with Keller Williams that happens to be in the Houston market. And she's saying their luxury market is really healthy right now. Uh, one particular million dollar listing, she's had more showings this month than the previous 12 months combined. Um, what are you seeing out there from, you know, you've got relationships with various agents yeah. in multiple states, you're based in California, but what are you seeing locally, I guess, in California, but also uh, with some of your other agents in other markets? Yeah, I'm hearing, and some. I'll start with the other markets. We have quite a few affiliates in North Carolina, and they're seeing an increase in their luxury market, as well as our partnership with CMG Mortgage. They were talking about the increase in the uh, availability of jumbo loans, which obviously helps funnel the luxury market, because at one point those were put to a halt. And then I've been working really closely with our agent in Laguna, Susie Daly. I'm actually going to one of her listings tomorrow. We're going to do a video behind the scenes of uh, meeting the client. And that's a $22 million listing. Oh, that's awesome. So she's been seeing an increase. We talked just just a few weeks back, she had an $18 million listing. We were gonna do it on that home. She's like, it's already an escrow, like that one's gone. So they're moving quick in the high-end luxury over here in Laguna. Um, and I think that's a good sign. Yeah, that's, that's a great sign. That's a great sign. Um, all right, I, I had some questions I wanted to ask, so I want to stick to those. Um, breaking into luxury, you know, so we have a podcast, we provide a lot of great free resources to agents. You know, what words of advice would you have, whether they be, you know, veteran season agents or those agents that are looking, uh, that are newer agents looking to break into luxury? What advice would you have? Yeah, we focus on that in the launch of our luxury division because it's not just for people who are already doing luxury it's to help that agent take that next level take that next step in their career so when you're looking at entering luxury you're looking at entering a niche market and so you need to know what does luxury mean in your area i would take a look at my market understand what is that luxury threshold for the area that i'm servicing that i want to go after what types of homes are they what types of communities what types of people are, are in that community and associations and the jobs that be, they belong to so that you fully understand the niche that you're gonna market. Cause you need to, you need to understand your consumers, right? So that then when you do win that listing, you're able to do well and properly market that home. So I think going through some type of educational or coaching program, whether it be through our partnership with the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing, through uh, the luxury listing program that you host, I think understanding, it's kind of going back to the principles and the basics of real estate, but applying it to the niche market that you're going after, the luxury market in your area. Well, you bring up a good point. So Realty One, the, the brand you're with, you guys launched a luxury division during a pandemic. I mean, it's one thing about launching a luxury division and that the undertaking there, but you, you, you launched a luxury division at Realty One as a company during the pandemic talk i'm sure this didn't uh, take place like hey let's launch a luxury division at the start of the pandemic so obviously it took probably some time uh, to ramp up to that T talk to talk to me about that what did that look like you know how, how much of an overtake undertaking did that take how long of planning things out and what that looked like and what you wanted included and you know give, give every i guess behind the scenes behind the curtain a little bit what went into uh, the thinking of launching a luxury division, the importance, obviously you think it's important because you uh -huh. did. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about that because this is something that I'm, I'm passionate about. And, you know, kudos to you, especially during the timing. A lot of companies might hit that pause button, but you didn't. So talk to me about what went into the thought of Real 21 and the importance why you guys thought having a dedicated luxury division I, I'm, and you can talk about the separate tools and resources uh, that agents within that division receive. Yeah, so we've been getting requests from our brokers and our agents that they want a luxury division and understanding why they want a luxury division for quite some time. So it's been in, it's been in our minds. We've been developing it for, for a few years now, and we decided we're launching it. 2020, we're launching this luxury division. We teased it at our summit event in early February, and then just two weeks after, the world shut down. We're like, okay, pivot, focus on waking up to win, which I talked about earlier today. 
Um, and we saw a really good increase, a really good adoption of everyone loving the education, wanting to take this time to invest in themselves so that they're just ready to go when the market opens up. And watching that, getting that feedback, hearing from our agents and brokers, we love to hear what they want and what they think, how they're feeling their emotions, and then react to that and provide what's needed instead of saying, this is, this is what we wanna do for you. Um, so see, hearing all that feedback, we're like, this, there's no better time than to launch our luxury division right now. We have everyone's attention. We're talking to them daily. We're communicating and we're closer more now than ever. I've gotten, I've developed more relationships with all of our broker owners and affiliate owners in the last four months than I did. I've been with Realty One Group for 18 months. And now, now I have daily calls with all of them following up. How's it going? How is recruiting that agent? You know, what's your next marketing strategy and recruiting strategy? So since we're closer together than ever, it was the perfect time to launch a luxury, luxury division. And we've seen a really good increase. We saw a lot of people um, join us on our first training and we're excited. It's going really well. It's only been launched for a month. Yeah, you guys, what was the official <laughs> date? Was it June 1st? It's June 1st is when we launched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the great thing about it is that you know, we have the foundation of Realty One Group, who we are, the marketing, the support, the education, the training of a national franchise. And now we're just taking it to that next level for those agents in those markets where it makes sense uh, to be able to attract that level of clientele and to mm -hmm. have that level of training and education. Yeah, that's great. So you, you, you brought this up earlier as well, but during a slower time period, now things are picking up. The market's pretty hot. We're in the heat of this, mm -hmm. you know, the hot market in most markets, everything got pushed back a little bit. But, you know, going back a few months ago, you guys launched this, this daily trainings. And, you know, what better time during that time to work on your business and in your business? Uh, because now, right, it's difficult, right? I'm doing a yeah. virtual luxury designation training in a couple of weeks and we got some great feedback, but it also had, hey, it's busy. So there, sometimes agents are always going to find a reason not to dive in. Or, you know, so I, I, I commend you for, you know, focusing and, 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 and launching this during this time. You know, you guys have been around 15 years, you're in 43 states, and mm -hmm. you, 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 you launched a luxury division, which I commend you. You know, I'm, those that know me that don't know me, I'm pretty agnostic when it comes to, I mean, we have guests on from all different brands on Monday, look, this week, two yeah. days ago, I had the CEO of Century 21, and next week I'm the CEO of Exit Realty. So we have different perspectives, and uh, I believe that there's amazing uh, agents and training of, of all franchises and independents. I, I look at the good in companies, but but my point is I do see a lot of big franchises. Their luxury division consists of maybe a different logo and a different sign, and that's about it. So so awesome job, you know, for raising the bar and and. Uh, looking at and listening to your agents as to, hey, we want more support, we want more tools. So, um, you know, good, good job there. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. We really focus on, this logo is beautiful and it brings in the gold that Realty One Group is. We've always been black and gold. This is a little bit lighter and brighter, but we tell our agents it's not, the logo is not going to win you the listing. Sure. It's, it's you and it's not what's going to sell the home so that you're successful so that you get that referral and so that your business continues in luxury. Yeah. It's all about the training and understanding what you're doing in your business so that you can do really well when you get that first luxury listing and then your career just skyrockets from there. Yeah. Yeah, a a absolutely. I tell agents, grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. If an agent's more confident, they're more likely to step out of their comfort zone. If they're more likely to step out of their comfort zone, they might do some prospecting or lead generation or, or go on that appointment where perhaps they wouldn't. You know, I was at the Inman event, uh, Inman Connect event in New York, and um, I had an agent uh, come up to me. Someone said, oh, you need to talk to Michael. She was out of the Atlanta market and she shared with me, she goes, man, I wish I would have met you before. She goes, I had an opportunity to, to pretty much list a PGA golfer's $10 million plus home. It was really mine for the, the undertaking, but I hadn't sold or listed anything in that price point before. So naturally agents have fear, limiting beliefs. We That's all do. Right. Uh, exactly. So, but I looked at it as an opportunity and, and, uh, but, but we want agents to have those tools and those resources. So if that opportunity does arise, 
Taylor, they'll, they'll look at it, they'll be excited about it, um, and they'll, they'll welcome that opportunity. A couple things before I forget, if you guys, because we're streaming to a couple groups, if you have a question for Taylor or me, leave it, I'll check here, leave us a like, share it if you will, do a watch party if you want, we're going to be on here for another good 20 minutes or so, we've got several questions to go through, so I'm looking real quick to see if we have any questions, do we have any questions? Um, not seeing any yet, but I'll check back once in a while, Taylor, I'll look down to see if somebody's sending in um, a question. So talk to me about what it looks like um, to be an agent at Realty One in the One Lux Group, in your luxury group. So uh, first off, can anybody be in the luxury division within your group or does an agent need to qualify? And it's, if they do need to qualify, what does that look like? We have an extensive luxury training. That's the qualification for being a, a One Lux member. Okay. So it's open to all of our agents to take advantage of. They would, they would attend that extensive training and become a One Lux member if their production level does qualify them for CLHMS designation, then they would also be able to qualify for the One Lux luxury certification. Okay, and so it's kind of two parts. You have that new agent who hasn't done, or they might not be a new agent, that agent who has been in the business for five years, ready to take it to the next level. They don't have that luxury background yet, but they're ready for it. They're going to go through that training. And then with their broker, they might go through a mentor program, get paired with a successful luxury agent in the office to do some co listings so that we can get them to the level and teach them um, to earn that luxury designation. And then we're going to have these other agents, Susie Daly, who I was talking about earlier. She's been in the business for 14 years, been with Realty One Group for six years, average listings, four million. She's luxury. She qualifies for sure. Um, but she loves it because now she has a network of Realty One Group agents across the nation that she can lean on when her clients want to buy that second home in Wyoming or Colorado or wherever it might be. Mm -hmm. They can refer and share best practices. Yeah. Um, we were talking the other day and she said, I love the training. I mean, I knew everything that was going on in the training. It's what I do every day. She, right now she has seven active luxury listings, but it was good to hear from other peers what they're doing, why they won that listing, how they overcame different hurdles. Cause it's always changing and it's so good to be able to have that opportunity and someone to talk to, to reflect back on, this is what I'm doing really well. This is where I see improvement or here's some creative new ideas that I can do for my next client. That's a, that's a great point. I use the term iron sharpens iron, right? So if you hang out with five top luxury agents, you're bound to be the, the, the sixth, right? So what are you doing to better yourself and, you know, sharing best practices or just, Hey, I have, I have a situation here. Uh, what, what, what are some of the, the agents in this networking group, in this group here, what are you guys doing? What, how would you handle it? Getting mm -hmm. just different perspectives, being able to articulate something a little bit differently um, is, is really important. Uh, knowing your numbers, knowing where the market is. You know, Wayne Gretzky says, don't go to where the puck is, go to where it's going, right? So knowing where the market's going. Uh, coming from the standpoint of being an advisor, a, a leading authority versus a salesperson. So, uh, so some really good points there. And the one thing that you brought up that I like and I recommend to agents is, is having some type of mentor or coach. You know, there's a lot of free resources out there and then there's those maybe you're committed and you learn best with some one-on-one -on -one coaching and that's a totally different topic. But, but Taylor, uh, you mentioned, you know, mentorship. So um, that, that's something that we do a lot of times is we'll help agents when they're going on the appointment, you know, they can mirror us or we can mirror them. It's no different than if you go to one of your favorite restaurants and the waitress comes over and there's a, there's a new waitress or waiter in training, right? Yeah. On the job training. Yeah. That's the best way to learn. Yeah. You can practice your scripts, which is great to do. Um, you can read all the books, go through all the training, but it's when you, you were just talking about that first listing you get and, you're a little nervous. Some agents might, oh, I don't know if I can do this listing. Others are going to go full force into it. And once you do that first listing, whether it's training alongside someone or you do it on your own, then you get that confidence. And yeah. that's really what luxury is all about. Yeah. That's what our business is all about is the confidence yeah. because you have that track record because you know, I am the best agent for this client. Yeah. And, and sometimes we have people watching this that might not be in the real estate field. 
on some of these lives on my personal page or whatever, but that's just, you hit the nail on the head, but that's the same for any industry. Whoever's watching this that isn't in real estate, if you have that confidence, you know, you're going to, you're going to have that energy. You're going to have that passion even more. It's, it's, yeah. it's why the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Tony Robbins talks about that. You know, if, if you have some success, you'll take more action. If you have, if you take more action, you'll have more positive results, which fuels you to take more action. And it's, it's, it's the positive cycle. Mm -hmm. And your so. confidence comes from that education. It's that knowledge, knowing your market, because mm -hmm. you're very confident in your numbers. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. So if someone asks you a question, you feel confident that you know the answer to it. Yeah. And it also comes from experience. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. You're always going to grow. Yeah, that's a good point. And then if you don't know the answer, be honest with someone. So Taylor, that's a great question. Um, I don't know the answer, but let me get back to you and then get back to people, right? So if you, if if a buyer or a seller asks you a question, you'll earn a lot more trust by being honest uh, and tell them that you don't know the answer, but get back to them with that answer. Yep. We have a leader, our broker owner and our our corporate location. So we have 14 locations across California, Arizona, and Nevada. His name is Pat Kelly. He oversees about 3,000 of our agents. Okay. And his, his saying is always, be the source of the source. Like, just answer the questions. Find the source and get the knowledge and then explain it to people, no matter mm -hmm. what it is that we're talking about. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's about a great that point. Good. Uh, any words of advice for offices or large teams, or you know, maybe you have some independents or even franchises watching on here, um, launching a luxury division. I'll never forget four years ago when we launched our designation. It was to a Remax brand, and and uh, they were bar one of the six offices over 300 agents, and they just wanted some additional support and tools and resources that they weren't getting from their franchise luxury division. Um, so for you, it, 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 you know. You guys just launched it a month ago today. It's a one month anniversary. What what advice would you have for, you know, brokers, brokerages, large teams, or even, you know, small little, hey, I'm an agent within a company and I want to have a little small luxury division. What, what advice would you have? I mean, I think that advice is that similar to someone entering luxury. It's understanding the why. Why, why are you going to launch a luxury division? What's the reason for your market? Whether if you're a broker, oftentimes it's because your office is serving, servicing an area where there are luxury homes and you wanna be able to offer a separate division for those clients. So the why is for that to distinguish the marketing, to differentiate it. And then it's also gonna be for the broker, the why is recruitment and retention. So you're gonna be able to recruit a new level of agent that's gonna be able to help that luxury market and help you grow as an office as in for your current agents, you're going to help them nurture their skills and take their business to the next level, which really helps with retention. So uh, good, very good points there. How do how does Realty One define luxury, if you don't mind me? So, you know, if there's a Realty One office in Iowa versus Arizona, you mentioned versus North Carolina, is is there an equation? Is it a price point? Um, what, oh, sure. How does Realty is, One define luxury? It is set by the market, by the broker in their market, and it's 2.5 times the median in the area. Okay. Okay. Very good. Those are those are the homes that are able to use luxury. It's excluding land. There's some there's some exceptions, right, for luxury communities, and maybe that home is is a, a more of a fixed rubber, but it's part of this gated luxury community, and it would be. To marketed toward investors who are luxury investors sure. that would make sense right so we give the broker the uh, autonomy to make that decision but we give them guidelines that it shouldn't it shouldn't steer far from 2.5 times the median however you know that we have that partnership uh, with the CLHMS designation so right. in order to qualify for a one lux certification that criteria is different it's the top 10 percent in your market okay okay so you know internally you have uh, 2.5 times mm -hmm. the median. Most real estate agents, by the way, are terrible at math and they don't know how to figure out the median. So for our course, we just use the average because that's a lot easier for people. Um, yeah. But median is more accurate, but we, at the luxury listing special designation, we use average. So we define luxury as three times the average sale price for that given market. And we define high end as a step below that price point wise is two times the average sale price 
Okay. Um, media is more accurate agents that are watching, but most agents, and no offense, but most people are terrible at math. So we found that average is easier. So we just have stuck with that. Yeah. So we've educated our brokers, right? 2.5 times the median with your broker approval. So go get broker sign off before you start using the One Lux branding on your listings. Okay, very good. Different <laughs> signage? To help with that math. To help with that math. Yeah. You guys have a different signage. I, I know you have a different logo, but if there's a one, if there's a luxury listing, um, do you guys have the same sign or different? Just out of curiosity. We do have different signs. Nice. We have a Lux sign. Nice. And, and one Lux is always used in conjunction with their Realty One Group DBA logo. Yeah. So it's it's one Lux powered by Realty One Group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a separate website uh, for just your luxury listings within Realty One? Being that we will have that. Okay. Cool. Being that it's so new, that's that's part of the development. So coming coming later on in nice. the next six months would be that right now we have a One Lux website, but it doesn't have the listings in there. We'll have the listings. We'll be showcasing our agents. When you search for an agent in your area, um, all the agents are in this uh, like database. Industry, yeah, listing. It'll show which ones are One Lux certified. They'll have nice. a, an icon designation next to oh, them. Oh, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, some stand out. Their listings will be syndicated to that One Lux site as well as a digital One Lux magazine. Nice, that's awesome, good. Um, in your opinion, uh, when uh, things go back to the new normal, I'm not even going to say normal, I'm going to call it the <laughs> new normal that. now, yeah. uh, those agents and those teams and those brokerages that you know, are going to be most successful, and I've talked to some agents that are having their best year ever or they're on pace to, but some are struggling. Some markets are really difficult and and you know, agents are doing everything that they should have been doing and they're still struggling, right? You could, Cause that's the one thing about sales. You could be hungry. You could be a great marketer. You could do all the things, but ultimately, you know, does a transaction take place? Does someone buy or sell one of the properties you represent? And if the answer is no, you know, there's a lot, I wanna be mindful and sensitive that there's a lot of agents out there that, that are struggling. They're struggling financially. They're struggling mentally. They're struggling relationship-wise. Um, and so I, I, I do want to be really sensitive to that. It's not all roses, right? It's not all HGTV. It's not all million-dollar agent, right? Uh, yeah. This industry has a high churn rate. By churn, I mean get licensed, and then within a year, they're not in the business anymore because it's 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 not it's not easy. I don't want to be discouraging people. I don't want to come as you know negative Nick as my wife calls them or negative Nancy's, but you know it can be difficult. So those agents that that are going to be you know most successful or that are successful in your mind, fill in the blank. You know what's the one or two things you know those agents that are going to be successful when the new normal is the new normal are those that have blank in common. I think the agents that are going to be the most successful are those that have that human touch. So we talked about this a lot in April in our Waking Up to Win um, daily town halls. We talked about right now is not the time. It's the time to reorganize your CRM and do all that administrative work that you never had time for because you're so busy out in the field with your clients. But it's not the time to ask, are you ready to buy? Are you ready to sell? Right now at the beginning at April when it was there's so much unknown so many changes happening daily. It was the time to just call someone up and say, how are you? Is everything okay? How are you and your family? How are you feeling? And I think those agents that did that then continue to do that as part of their business to send follow-up cards that are, that are birthday cards, congratulations when someone has a kid, just th I'm thankful for your, your friendship, whatever it is that the people who are people who are, have that human touch will continue to do well. You know, that's, that's an amazing point. You know, in this industry, in most industries, everybody's looking for the easy button. You know, they want the easy button, some magical website, something out there that, that will make their lives easier. But, you know, Daniel Kamen, who was a Nobel Peace Prize winner, says, you know, someone would rather do business with someone they like and they trust, even if that person is offering a lower quality product or service at a higher price. So the point is, if you're likable, if you're coming from a place of authenticity, if you're not a salesperson, but you're a consultant, you're an advisor, you talk about the pros and the cons of a certain decision, you know, that's how you become referable. That's how 
you know, your top of mind awareness versus the salesman that wants to get the deal done. So uh, I'm, that's a great, you know, I've asked that question. This is our 29th episode. We launched this because of COVID-19 and we've had a lot of different answers, you know, for, you know, um, uh, relentless was uh, Michael Meidler, CEO of Century 21's answer on Mon Monday, relentless. Um, everybody's got, but, but being, you know, that human touch, right? And, and that, that's, that's really, uh, especially during this time, going back to the original point where a lot of people are struggling, just being in the moment, that's, that's, that's a huge, uh, huge skill set that some people, they want to talk, 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 but you need to really listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Listening, oh. listen more, talk less. Yeah. Great point. Great. <laughs> you got two ears and one, one mouth, right? We got to be listening yep. more. Um, all right. Let me see here. Um, selling digitally. How do you think selling digitally will be kind of the new norm, if you will? Or what do you think is here to stay that Zoom, for example, we're on Zoom right now. So you know, do you feel Zoom is going to be integrated or, or video walkthroughs or to talk to me a little bit about what do you think the, the new norm is going to be? Definitely video walkthroughs that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, more, I, I'm seeing and I'm hearing a lot of conversation about agents trying virtual tours for the first time. They've always been about virtual tours, 360 tours, but only in, like five to 7% of the industry was actually including those on their listing. And I know that all of the partners that are offering that are seeing a huge increase in usage of virtual tours. And I think that their technology, that's gonna push their technology to only continue to enhance. I know that Matterport is offering the meta tags, which I think is really cool for a luxury listing to be able to talk about the different, um, the different features in the home that are right, so right. unique Appliances in luxury. or you know, yeah, just pointing. So for those of you, and I'll let you describe this, Taylor. But for those of you that are wondering, you know, you have video tours, and then you have these kind of virtual walkthroughs where you, you hit a button, you can zoom up, and and Matterport is you know one of the leading companies. There's other 3D tour companies out there, but Matterport is probably the most known. And so if you were looking at my office, you know, we just moved in a couple of weeks ago. That's why my photos are temporary behind us. But, you know, if you're in, in an office in a luxury property and there was something unique that you wanted to draw attention to in that 3D tour, talk to me about what a meta tag is. Yeah. So as you're walking through the home, there might be this little, they almost look like location pins. And if you hover over it, it'll, it'll talk about maybe this unique granite or wood that the table is made out of. And sometimes it will even have a video or a link out to learn more about how this is a one of a kind and it came from Costa Rica or whatever it is that's so unique in a luxury home. You can also just do your standard appliances mm -hmm. that come with the home and that just gives, it gives more story to your home because when you're selling a home, you're helping the buyer envision themselves in that home. So that virtual walkthrough really helps. I'm a buyer through the computer screen, but I'm now walking through that home and I'm imagining myself cooking in that kitchen, watching sports uh, across the way because it's an open floor layout, uh, out in the patio with whatever grill and fireplace is out there. And we also have a partnership with Fox Burning, who I know you've had on here, and they help a lot with that, with turning on the TVs, turning on the, the fireplaces. Um, which help that buyer envision themselves in the home. It's bringing that story to life. Yeah. Digitally. And, and it's a couple right. points here. You know, she, a lot of nuggets you shared. They're gold nuggets, I might add. <laughs> yeah. No, no pun intended with the, the Lux gold. But uh, so a couple things. Telling the story is it's particularly with high-end and luxury properties. You know, every home's got a story, but telling the story and, you know, you can do that through photos and videos and descriptions, but you can do it with meta tags as well. So that's something I encourage you as the agent. Our job as marketers is to accentuate the best feature of a home, its location, the amenities, and downplay the least favorable. So there's nothing in stone. I'm, I'm coaching an agent right now um, out in the Virginia market, and he went on a trophy listing. And... Um, Literally, it was a previously listed property, and we looked at the, the previous agent's photos, and so we set a game plan. Like, here's what I would do differently. I would showcase this more, this not as much. And, and so telling the story is, is, is really important uh, through photos and descriptions, but you can bring the best copywriter in the world in, 
if, if people are swiping left, you know, like the Tinder app, if they're not interested, it doesn't matter. They're not going to read the description. So you really got to use amazing photos. You hit the nail on the head and you mentioned Box Brownie. For those agents that aren't familiar, you can go to boxbrownie.com. Uh, they're one of our sponsors for our upcoming luxury designation training in two weeks. Box Brownie will edit photos. They'll do drone edits. They'll do actually 3D tour edits. They'll put images on TVs. They'll turn fireplaces on. I call it photo enhancement versus Photoshop, but they do some uh, virtual renovations. It's really amazing. Check it out, boxbrownie.com. So thanks for uh, bringing that up. Yeah, and you brought up a good point talking about that listing and what would we do differently um, when we're listing this home and there's some unfavorable parts of the home. We talk about that in our luxury training that if the client falls in love with the lovable parts of the home, they'll forgive the less favorable parts of the home. They're going to buy for those top five things that they love. So highlight those the most. Have those be your beginning yeah. photos or even remove some of the less favorable photos. It's not dishonest marketing because they're going to go look at that home and they're going to see that whole home, but they're going to remember like, this is why I fell in love with the home is this kitchen area. Yeah, no, you bring up a good point. So, you know, buyers buy on emotion and they justify on logic, right? So, you know, I just got a new car, you know, about a month ago now and I purposely go looking on a Sunday when there's not going to be somebody over my shoulder. Right. And, and so I, I make a sound decision. And when I, when I know I'm, I'm ready, I go back in. Well, you can, you're talking a large asset. You're talking about a large purchase. Most people can't visualize. That's why staging is so important. We actually wrote a book called outside the box and it's really a book of just visuals talking about before and after and how we transform the look and feel of a home. And then there's a house in Nashville that, uh, we were helping the owners and the previous agent, and we actually had two sets of, of uh, brochures made. This was on the TV show Nashville, this $15 million home. And we had two sets of brochures, the actual pictures, but then digital renovated because most buyers can't visualize. So we had updates yeah. made. And we took it to that next level and we had easel boards and estimates made and all that. But people buy on emotion and they justify on logic on all price points, but particularly for those high end and difficult listings. Um, and that's what I would I'd probably want to end with before my last question to you is you got to really do a good job. But most real estate agents are terrible at being honest with people because they, they either are too direct and offend or they don't know how to articulate. So that's a skill set in itself. It's something that we teach in one of our modules in our designation is how to position the homes more effectively, but how to have those difficult conversations with an owner where they don't take offense to it. And that, that, that could be a show all in itself. Maybe we'll, we'll come back and do that with that would be a Peter, fun one. And Peter and Box Brownie and, and that whole crew. That could be fun. So the last question I have for you, uh, obviously I, I touched upon a little bit, uh, it's something that I've gotten away from a little bit, but win at home series, right? So, so you, you know, if those of you that you could show it, you were supposed to get married this week, weren't you? And, and so I'm supposed to be in Costa Rica zip lining. My birthday was on Monday, just celebrating my birthday for a week and getting married on Saturday. I know, I know. So COVID-19 has messed up a lot of plans. And, and so, you know, you're not married, but you're soon to be married. And, and, um, you know, any words of advice to, to those that are, you know, going through disruption, maybe working out of their home, Michael Meidler on, as I mentioned, Monday, he's working out of his home, lower, lower level of his house and his office, you know, it's kind of the new norm, but any words of advice just in general uh, for those that, uh, you know, are, are working in a different location, maybe are struggling, um, you know, any, any, any positive last thoughts before I check for any, any questions? Words of advice for people who have had just unexpected changes in their life? Yeah, so, well, we all had unexpected yeah. changes. So, you know, during COVID-19, we've had to pivot, right, is the term we use. Um, any words of advice just in general? Maybe you're seeing some of your top agents uh, that are brokers that are uh, have adapted or, or, you know, whether it be mindset or, or, or you know, just advice in general. I think something that's helped me personally. So I typically have gone to the office. I've never had a work from home job. I've moved to work from home and I enjoy it because I enjoy being a stay at home dog mom. I have my two dogs here with me. 
So I was like, I love this, but I'm also such a people person. I'm such an extrovert. I like going out to lunch with my team. I like being able to just scoot next to someone's desk and collaborate. Um, but since everyone's been starting these Zoom calls and I'm on Zoom looking at this camera for like eight to 10 hours a day, that's really helped. So I think creating these groups of, of peers that you like and trust and having maybe it's just 30 minutes a day that you guys follow up and say, how's your day? What are your goals for the day? It works as accountability. And as you check things off in accountability, that internally makes you feel good. So that'll lift your spirit, but you also get a little bit of that human touch that's probably bringing your emotions down a little bit. Like I haven't hung out with people, haven't gone to lunch with people, haven't just been able to say hi and grab coffee by the coffee machine with people. So to be able to do it virtually, it doesn't completely fulfill it, but it does a little bit. You're not just sitting in silence by yourself, yeah. working really hard. That's a, that's a great advice, especially for those extroverts, right? I mean, introverts yeah. maybe haven't been affected as much. Maybe they're more stressed out because they liked working from home quietly. Now they have the kids or somebody else working from home. So that's a whole, whole different stress level. Uh, for somebody that wants a, an agent broker watching this on the various groups or the, the replay, again, we do post all these replays uh, on our YouTube channel. You can check it out in Marketing Luxury Group, Marketing Luxury Group on YouTube. You can see all 20 nine episodes uh, but for those that um, want to find out more about realty one or your luxury division the one lux group where, where, where's a good place for them to do that head over to realty one group.com realty one group.com taylor samara you've been great great interview i appreciate your time and uh, we'll be putting this replay up but uh till now keep raising the bar in real estate i appreciate everybody if you have any questions shoot me a note uh, shoot me a private message, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Uh, we have an opening Monday, uh, still have an opening Monday for the 6th. Uh, so if anybody's got a suggestion, let me know. We have an opening, like I said, Monday the 6th. Um, and then Wednesday, we have Tammy Bunnell uh, from Exit Realty. Uh, keep raising the bar. Uh, when people tell you you can't do something, I love proving others wrong, and I hope you do too. And uh, again, let's Let's come together, let's unify, let's figure out common ground that we all have in, uh, in common versus divisiveness. My name is Michael Lafito. happy July 1st, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, thanks for hosting this. I love watching this series, and I'm excited to join you, when is it, on the 15th? For yeah, your, so, your yeah so our luxury designation, part one is on the 14th, Tuesday the 14th, and part two is the 15th. And then our bonus day is going to be the 16th, and we're going to have you guys on as a contributor there. That'll be, that'll be great. Um, looking forward to it. We've got more mm -hmm. signups today. And uh, again, for people that are interested, you can go to luxurydesignation.com, luxurydesignation.com. Two-day virtual part series with the bonus, and uh, you're going to... I think you'll you'll be impressed. Check it out, luxurydesignation.com. The event itinerary is there. We have some pretty good sponsors, powerful partners, and um, there's zero previous sales requirements with our designation. So thanks for bringing that up, and uh, everybody have a great day. Take care. Love your uh, Realty One uh, gear, by the way. Always be marketing, ABM. I love it. We have a 100 SKU shirt line, so I have a ton of Realty One group clothes. Nice. Hey, we might have to we might have to change a little lux for some. You know, we'll have to talk about that offline. Oh yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Take care, Taylor. Awesome. Thank you. All right, you're Bye, Bye. Bye.